The name George Floyd is being heard in Denver tonight and across America. Column protests have circled city streets for six hours now and are expected to last into the night. It was last night when things got dicey downtown with people throwing rocks at police and police responding with chemical rounds of protesters. Protesters today are again calling for an end to police brutality that ends the lives of black Americans like George Floyd, who died after he was pinned to the street in Minneapolis by the knee of a white police officer. That officer was charged with murder today. Last night's protest was scattered by shots fired near the state capitol. Elected officials in the crowd said that the shooter was not one of theirs. Police still have not found that person today. Scattered groups around the city last night blocked I-25. They vandalized the state capitol and they took over various intersections before they were cleared away by pepper balls and tear gas from police. Denver's police chief defended how the police responded last night, as did the mayor, who will join me in a moment. Denver police are preparing for another tense night. It's obvious by the fencing that they are putting up around police headquarters. Last night in Minneapolis, rioters burned a police precinct while people set off fireworks nearby in celebration. Let's talk about why protesters are filling the streets. Denver itself has a history of police brutality. But why now has this case out of Minnesota at this moment moved so many Americans to action? You've seen Elizabeth Epps, a progressive justice reform advocate, on Next over the years. She's been out in the streets this week. We're out there for George Floyd, but we're out there for so many other folks. Names that we already know and names that we don't know yet. And why we're out, it's a direct response to the systemic state violence. Um, and to be out and knowing that crowd control is itself a public health disaster, a public health crisis that's being perpetrated against us, it's worth that risk when we see that, in fact, if you look like me or like you or too many of our neighbors, you're not safer at home. RTD has decided to shut down bus and rail service in and out of downtown indefinitely due to the protests. RTD leadership tells me they're not trying to interfere with people coming in to protest peacefully. They say this is about the safety of their employees. RTD suspended bus service to the big station right across from the Capitol last night on the advice of Denver police who are facing off with protesters there. Today's indefinite transit shutdown was not requested by the police or by the city. It was RTD's call. The chairwoman of the board explained. They can take public transit. It's just not going to drop them off at Union Station or the Civic Center. So they would walk in. But it really, um, if you saw the newscast, and I'm sure you did, I was watching you last night, there'd be no way to navigate a bus through, through all of the people that were out there and the police. And it would have been a real hindrance for um, the safety of everybody. RTD's assistant general manager, Pauletta Tanilis, told me today that they would consider restarting service to downtown Denver if they were asked to do that by Denver police or the mayor. So let's now go inside how these protests work. I think too often on the news we say that it's either a peaceful protest or it's a violent protest. That often overlooks what's happening just beneath the surface of a protest. Our Marshal Zellinger is back with us from outside the state capitol where he was sent scrambling to avoid tear gas last night. And uh, Marshall, yeah. I, I saw this in the protest at the Democratic National Convention in Denver more than a decade ago. You saw it last night. You'll have some people in the crowd looking for trouble, blending in with a larger group that just wants to be heard. Normally it's easy to decipher between the two because of the masks. When we're not all wearing masks, you can kind of tell who doesn't want to be identified in a protest and who wants to peace peacefully protest and you don't care if you see your face or not. The protesters here and right now it, it, it could be a mix for all I know, but this is peaceful here right now. Nothing's going on with any conflict with police. They're back from the 16th Street Mall. They're back here on the West Steps. Uh, the graffiti here at the Capitol, the broken windows, that was cleaned up overnight. But in the last 20 minutes, the Civil War monument here on the west side, that's been graffitied with spray paint. It started with chalk, then it went to spray paint. The people who did it posed for photos. Above them on the second floor balcony, Colorado State Patrol troopers are watching from up there and they are the brunt of some of the chanting down here. I just want to show you some video from earlier when the protests started again at noon today. Again, no conflicts at the start of it. There was the chanting here on the west steps. 
They progressed down to the street level, uh, blocking some of the streets as they went around the Capitol and then progressed to 16th Street and back. That's happened a couple of times. Earlier, I spoke with State Representative Leslie Herod, who was here on the west side when the protest started this time yesterday when there were shots fired. And we talked about trying to have a peaceful protest that's infiltrated by people who want to do wrong. There were a lot of peaceful protesters who were out yesterday who were expressing their frustration um, about law enforcement abuse. Um, but there were also some folks who joined in um, who were not peaceful. Um, I will say that the people who I talked to who were organizing the protest had every intent for a peaceful rally. Um, and folks just use that as an excuse to create more violence and discord among our community. And that shouldn't be tolerated. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have a specific group that showed up that we could uh, tie this to. Uh, there were folks that, uh, uh, that, that really caused significant uh, disruptions, and uh, we don't know the, the, the reason or the manner uh, behind it. So the reason or the manner behind it makes me wonder, why not say who? It, it, a, a small group of individuals is what was said earlier today by Chief Paul Pazin, and Kyle, there, there's the, perhaps the Antifa movement, definitely the anarchists that, that blend in at some point with the protesters, that it's the people 12 rows deep that throw something at the police that cause problems for the people who are standing peaceably in the front. Uh, Marshall, I think uh, when you go to a couple of these, you can get a read from the posture of the protest participants and then the posture of the law enforcement in terms of who's ready to do what and how soon. What do things look like down there right now in terms of the posture? I, I mean, it's the Colorado State Patrol right now that are keeping eye on what's going on here. I don't see Denver police around uh, as I look around Colfax and Lincoln. What happens, what we saw last night at 14th and Sherman, is when they meet a line, like at a crosswalk, where police draw a line across the intersection, and then the protesters come up to them, and they're quiet. And in some cases, some people will say something, but it's that action from farther back that's probably somebody who is just there to cause problems that creates that tension that the people up front feel the brunt of first. But here right now, it just seems to be the protesters chanting at the state patrol troopers that are not doing anything to change the posture. All right. Marshall Selling, I appreciate your work last night and today. Be safe. Denver Mayor Michael Hancock says that the city stands with and supports peaceful protesters. And he vigorously defended how Denver police used non-lethal force like pepper balls and tear gas to handle last night's protest. Mayor Hancock joins me now live. Mayor, thank you for your time. As always, Kyle, glad to be with you. I know that you don't want to see violence in the streets again tonight, but is Denver prepared for it? Yes, we, you know, we're prepared for it. Uh, our, our officers are on the perimeter and uh, we'll only engage if uh, necessary to protect uh, life and property. Why do you think that the death of George Floyd at this particular moment in America has moved so many people to action when so many other deaths haven't? Yeah, I, I, I think, uh, Kyle, quite frankly, this video was so vivid and so real. We could hear his voice. We could hear him calling for breath, pleading for the officers to acknowledge the fact that he could not breathe uh, painfully. Uh, and, and one thing I'll never forget is to hear him calling for his mom and, and to hear the bystanders, uh, witnesses who were there saying he cannot breathe, get up off of him, uh, pleading for the officers to show some compassion uh, for, for George. Um, I think the vividness of, of his murder uh, will resonate with us for a very long time. And it brought back all, all the memories and, and the thinking and all the passions behind uh, Eric Gardner and Ahmad Marbury and, and you know, Trayvon Martin. These, these are real emotions that, quite frankly, in many places in the United States have not been addressed. You offered solidarity with the protesters today, saying that you support their calls for justice. 
you also must know, though, that one of those one of the things that the protesters are protesting is you, your administration, your decisions. Some of them don't see you as an ally. They see you as the enemy. Well, I, I don't know what that means, Kyle, but let me tell you, I um, I'm a 50 year old man and I've grown up as, of course, as an African-American. I have I understand uh, what it means to be you know in this position and to feel the passion of watching our brothers and sisters struggle in the and in, in just to try to get by and to have an innate fear of police and concern for their safety when they ought not to be concerned for their safety around police officers. Uh, I have sat at the table and tried to negotiate opportunities and 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 relationships. I have run civil rights organizations and stood in the gap for our community. With that said, you know what I will continue to be focused on is how we bring those who stand for justice and, and, and are, ser are, are sworn to serve and protect, and those who expect and demand accountability and respect and, and fair treatment in our communities together. And I think that's the greatest platform and bully pulpit that I have as the mayor and to make sure that there's fair treatment. You were asked a striking question earlier today. In our bit of time remaining, I want to return to it here. You very quickly described the death of George Floyd as a murder, but you do not use that term when Denver police officers or sheriff's deputies kill someone, even when it's later determined that they acted inappropriately. So I'll ask you here, was Marvin Booker murdered? Michael Marshall, was he murdered? Was Jesse Hernandez murdered at the hands of Denver officers? Those individuals were, yes, murdered by police officers. Uh, I came in um, under different times, uh, different training protocols, uh, different levels of accountability with our law enforcement. It was the Booker case. It was the Marshall case, uh, Hernandez case that uh, led me, along with many members of this community, to begin to uh, effectuate change and the institution of policy of, uh, and the retraining of our officers. And if you look back to 2015, you see our officers have gone through a policy change developed in collaboration with the community in terms of excessive force and how we handle it and the expectations of accountability, but also um, how we expect to act in terms of de-escalating uh, situations, including not firing the cars and making sure that we do sight and distance and, and, and opportunity to do things other than to go hands-on or to use lethal uh, response. So I got to tell you that today the city of Denver has a much stronger and much deeper policy because of, uh, unfortunately, the deaths of those individuals in our communities uh, while interacting with police officers. Mr. Mayor, thank you for your time. I know that we are both hoping for a peaceful night tonight. Thank you again. Absolutely. Thank you, Kyle.